What's up YouTube? This is the Common Sense Professor, and today we're gonna to be looking at 10 different ways to help you improve online learning. Stay tuned. What's going on YouTube? So there might be several reasons that you're watching this video today. I am making this video because I have been teaching online for over 12 years, and I have seen things that students have done to be successful, and I've seen things that students have done to basically fail the class. And I'm here to help you out. If this is the first time you've taken an online class or maybe you're in an online program or it's possible that you're in school, high school, middle school, whatever, and you just don't know how to be successful with online learning, I'm here to help you out today. So we're going to be looking at 10 different things to help you be successful with online learning. Number one is time management. This is so important. I cannot stress the importance of this first topic because the reason I put it at number one. There are two types of online learning that you'll find, asynchronous and synchronous online learning. Asynchronous means that you basically have a certain period of time to complete an assignment. And if you want to complete that assignment at midnight, at eight o'clock in the morning, or whatever your schedule allows, as long as you finish the assignment by the due date, that is asynchronous online learning. Synchronous online learning is where you meet possibly through a Zoom meeting where you come together at the same time and you have an instructor that is there at the same time and it's similar to in-person class but it's just taken online. So it really doesn't matter which type of class that you're taking. The key is that you set aside a certain amount of time that you work on that class on the same scheduled time and you don't fray from that. Okay, that is the key because so many times people Think that if you take an online class it's going to be easier that uh, you don't have to be as it's not as structured these are all false accusations online learning can be very structured it can be very time consuming and many times it's more work than taking a class in person now it's generally a different type of learning now this leads me directly into the number two way to be successful with online learning number two is that you need to eliminate all distractions while you're working on your classes this is so hard to do if you are at home, let's say doing your class in your bed, your bedroom, uh, on the table. It can be extremely hard to eliminate all the distractions. Here's some keys that might help you do this. Have a certain space set aside just for studying or just for doing your online class. You might be able to focus more in a library. This might mean going outside. This might mean that you have your kitchen table or you have a desk that you're set aside just for this type of learning. I want to highly encourage you to do this because again, if you are taking a class and you're in your bed or on your couch, it's real easy to get distracted. Another way is to put your headphones in. So you might be in a situation where you have a lot of kids around or something like that. Uh, use headphones and play classical music. You might not love classical music. I get it, but classical music tends to be less distracting and so number three which this is very important is during your whenever you're doing your time management and you're trying to eliminate distractions silence your phones because there's nothing more distracting than if you're trying to take a class and somebody keeps texting you over and over again because you're focused in on your class and then you get a text about something completely unrelated so i highly encourage you silence your phones try to get rid of that distraction lastly and this is extremely hard for me too even being a professor when you're online don't go to these different websites I always go down a rabbit trail and it usually starts with YouTube unfortunately. A lot of times I'll go into YouTube to find a supplemental video or something like that and then the first thing that pops up is these videos that's suggested for me and then I click on one and before you know it I've spent 30 minutes watching videos unrelated to anything that I'm supposed to be doing. So this is the hard part but try to stay focused when you're online. Don't go to a bunch of websites. Don't think about oh I need to buy this on Amazon and to go to Amazon. Stay focused on your classwork. My next recommendation for you is that number four, you need to read your announcements. I cannot stress how important this is. I literally had an online class that I had an announcement that said how to be successful in this class. And I laid out examples of, of how to turn in your assignments, what to do, what not to do. I gave a document on exactly what your paper should look like. I made a few videos on my YouTube channel for students to go to. I gave other references on this announcement. And then I realized that no students were reading this. 
And so I made an announcement the next week to say, hey, if you're reading this, send me an email. Out of about 30 students, I had probably 10 or 11 to respond that they read the announcement. So be sure and read your announcements. Don't skip over that. A lot of times that's the first thing that's set up whenever you come at your online class is that you'll see your announcements first. Be sure and read that every time. Now, as I mentioned before, there are some differences between online learning and in-person classes. One of those differences is very important and don't take this for granted. So my suggestion for number five is that you take discussion boards seriously. A lot of times discussion boards on online learning can be a significant part of your grade. And I have seen students just blow those off before. Don't do that. Take time and effort into your discussion boards. Remember, your discussion boards is what takes the place of in-class communications. An example of this is if I'm in class and I ask the class a question, I expect to have responses back. Well, that's what discussion boards do for online learning, is it takes the place of this communication in the classroom. Now, we'll say that one thing the discussion board does that I like a lot is it allows you as a student to go out and do some research yourself and bring that back into the classroom. And many times I learn a lot from the discussion boards from my students. So take time, follow all the rules that set aside for your discussion board and be sure that you add to the conversation as you go along. Many times I would see students who normally have an A get a B because they blew off the discussion boards. But whenever you reply to your classmates, don't just say, I agree, right? That's not acceptable on the discussion boards. Add to the conversation. You might say, oh, I see your point. I agree to that. What do you think about this? All right, so don't blow off discussion boards. Discussion boards are very important and they're a very important tool to learning with online classes. So number six is have communication with your instructor. For some reason, whenever you're doing online learning, students think that there's this kind of division between you and your instructor. That is not the case. Many times you'll have more questions with an online class structure. Read through your syllabus and see how your instructor wants you to contact them. Sometimes with online learning, it's just simply sending them an email. Whatever the case may be, whatever your instructor has set up for you for your communication, use that. Communicate with your instructor. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Sometimes if you look in your discussion boards, you'll have a discussion board post set up to ask the instructors questions. Take advantage of this. This leads into number seven. And my number seven suggestion is pretty simple and straightforward. A lot of you know this, but I just want to reiterate how important it is to take notes while you're going through the lectures. Whether this is asynchronous, while you're on your own and you might have videos that you have to watch or different reading material that you have to do on your own or synchronous, where you're in a Zoom class, take good notes. So many times for some reason when I have students taking online classes, they don't take notes. This is so helpful for you, whether you're in person or online. Okay, now for number eight, and this is another simple, straightforward suggestion, but turn your assignments in on time. Don't be late. If you have a lot of online classes, it's really easy to miss an assignment where you have a lot of assignments. It can be kind of confusing. Here's what I suggest. Get your phone out. Whenever you first enter your class, look at your assignments that you can see. Enter those assignments into your calendar on your phone and have it notify you one or two days before they're due so that you can be sure that you get all your assignments completed and that you finish them on time. Don't procrastinate. This is something that a lot of us are guilty of, including myself. This leads me into number nine, which is extremely important. If you're watching this video and you're a college student, this should be extremely important to you because you're paying a lot of money to take an online class to learn. So my suggestion for number nine, you need to do your own research. So what I mean by that is if you're taking a class just because you completed all your assignments does not mean that you don't need to go out and do some research on your own. You need to do that because this makes you a lifelong learner. You become interested in the subject and if you're in college, you're taking classes to become a professional at something. And this is extremely hard if let's say that you're majoring in nursing and you're taking a gen ed. But the reason that colleges have things like gen eds where you have to take English and, and a literature class is to make you a more well-rounded person. And don't just brush it off because it's very possible you could find something that you absolutely love that you just never given a chance before. So become a lifelong learner. Take your classes seriously because again, this is preparing you for your future and you need to keep focused on your future whenever you're taking these classes. And that leads us to our final point, point 10, and that's to connect with your classmates. It is really hard sometimes to make that connection with your classmates when you're not sitting beside them in the classroom. 
there are many ways to connect with your classmates. I've seen a lot of my students will set up a messaging group just for their classmates so they can communicate back and forth between your classmates. Sometimes online classes will have a section in the discussion board for students to talk to each other back and forth, ask questions. I highly encourage you to connect with your classmates online. Now, this is my bonus step that goes along with that. Don't cheat. As professors and instructors, we have tools now to catch almost any kind of cheating. And if you get caught, more than likely, you'll get a zero for your grade. And the whole point of this whole video is to be successful. Well, if you get a zero for a grade, it's going to be hard to be successful in an online class. So don't plagiarize, don't copy. Be sure that you read your syllabus and understand your school's plagiarism policies. Don't get answers from students. Don't copy questions. Although it's good to work together as a group, don't copy each other's assignments. All right, so don't cheat. But I highly encourage you to connect with your students and build these relationships within your classes because a lot of times you'll have students in these classes that you'll have for several classes. And it's good to build those relationships even though you're not physically in a classroom. All right, so I hope this video has helped you. Please leave comments below if you have any comments to add to these 10 suggestions. What are your experiences with online learning? Have you had positive ones? Have you had negative ones? Tell me about them in the comments below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and click on the little notification bell. Thank you and have a great day.